the kingdom with no rules, no laws, and no king, by Norman Stiles. Once upon a time, a young boy named Benjamin lived in a kingdom that had no rules and no laws of any kind. It also had no king, but let's not get into that right now. It did have majestic mountain ranges, roaring rivers, really cool castles, cutesy cottages, beautiful birds, and adorable furry animals. Great weather, miles of beaches, perfect waves, all kinds of excellent trees, great for climbing, and a more than adequate number of benches for people to sit on. One day, Benjamin was sitting on one of these benches with his father, mother, and big sister. He was wearing a cowboy hat and they were all eating chocolate ice cream cones. All of a sudden, a big guy walked up to Benjamin, did sort of a silly dance, took Benjamin's cone right out from under his tongue, and ran off licking it. Hey, that guy took my chocolate ice cream cone, Ben yelled. I noticed, said his father, licking his own ice cream. He made a nice move on you. Guess he was in a mood for some chocolate ice cream, dear, said his mother sweetly. You have to learn not to pay attention to silly dances when you're eating ice cream, his big sister said. Remember, this was a kingdom without rules or laws of any kind. So there were no rules or laws about taking ice cream that didn't belong to you. Benjamin still wanted more ice cream, so he reached over and took his sister's cone. She immediately, and matter-of-factly, snatched her mother's cone. Benjamin's father quickly gulped his ice cream down in one bite just as Ben's mother was about to grab it. Ha ha, he said, with a big chocolate mustache dripping from his upper lip. Benjamin's mother sat thinking for a moment as Ben and his sister licked their ice cream very fast, keeping one eye on their mother. Then, Benjamin's mother started to whistle and appeared to be about to scratch an itch on her head. Instead, she reached around her daughter, knocked Benjamin's ice cream cone out of his hand, up in the air, and caught it in her mouth. Benjamin sighed a very deep sigh and said to himself, there's got to be a better way. His sister and his mother finished their ice cream cones. Then everyone put on their crash helmets, got into the car with Benjamin's mother at the wheel. The family headed home. Benjamin wore his cowboy hat on top of his helmet. There were no traffic laws of any kind. So as their car approached the kingdom's main intersection, Benjamin's mother had a decision to make. If the light was red, she could stop if she felt like it, or she didn't have to if she didn't feel like it. If it was green, she could stop, or she could go if she felt like it. The light was green, and Benjamin's mother decided she felt like going through it. Unfortunately, the person in the truck in front of her felt like stopping for the green light. Just before the car smashed into the rear of the truck, Benjamin thought to himself, there's got to be a better way. The next thing he knew, he was hanging by one leg upside down from a branch near the top of a very tall tree. And this was not one of the trees in the kingdom that was great for climbing. They're going to need ladders and stuff to get me down, he thought to himself. He was going to be up there a while, so he decided the best thing to do was relax. He looked around and saw that his parents and big sister were each hanging by one leg upside down in trees, as were lots of other people all around the intersection. Everyone looked relaxed and no one was particularly peeved. That was because they were used to it. Most of the many automobile accidents in the kingdom with no rules and no laws resulted in people hanging by one leg upside down in trees. As Benjamin swayed in the breeze, he could see a baseball field in the distance. A game was in progress. A game with no rules, of course. The players were doing whatever they felt like doing. Some were swinging bats, some were throwing balls, some were catching balls. Some were running back and forth on the bases bumping into each other. Some were helping the inj injured off the field. 
there was no score for some, and for others it was 12 to 6, or 165 to 125, and so on. For some, a hit was a hit. For others, an it, a hit was an out. And for a few, there was no such thing as a hit or an out. Some just sat in the middle of the base paths, digging in the dirt with pails and shovels. There's got to be a better way. Benjamin was screaming over and over as they carried him down from the tree. It's okay, Benjamin, dear. You're down now, his mother said. We're all okay now. We're out of our trees. See, we're out of our trees. Benjamin looked around and saw that everyone indeed was out of their trees. And it was at that very moment that he had resolved to himself he would figure out a better way. I'm going to my room and I'm not coming out till I'm finished, Benjamin said. Finished with what? His sister asked. I don't know yet, he said, slamming the door behind him. News spread all over the kingdom that a boy named Benjamin had gone to his room and wouldn't come out until he was finished. The entire kingdom gathered around Benjamin's house, waiting for him to come out of his room with whatever it was he was finishing. Then, after two and a half hours, Benjamin emerged. Finished, he said. Three laws and a bunch of rules, he said proudly. Huh? Said the kingdom, not having the faintest idea what he was talking about. This is the bunch of rules. Benjamin explained, holding up a booklet. From now on, we play by the rules in this book, like nine people on each side, nine innings, four balls, three strikes, no pails and shovels and stuff like that. If you don't play by these rules, you can't play. Interesting, some of the people in the kingdom said. Sounds pretty good, others said. No pails and shovels, fooey, said Benjamin's mother and father and some others. Get to the three laws, his sister demanded impatiently. Yeah, said the kingdom. Okay, Benjamin said. And he took out a very impressive piece of notebook paper and began to read. Everyone will stop on red and go on green. That is the first law. Nobody can take another person's chocolate ice cream cone. That's the second law. Every day at noon, the entire kingdom will come over to my house, play cowboy, dig in my sandbox with pails and shovels, and sing and dance to a great song I wrote called, Hail Benjamin, He's a Heck of a Guy. That's the third law. If you don't obey the laws, you get punished. Interesting, some of the people in the kingdom said. Sounds pretty good, others said. The law with pails and shovels is my favorite, said Benjamin's mother and father. Hail who? said a guy in the back to no one in particular. Then Benjamin said he was going back into his room and would not come out until the kingdom tried the three laws and bunch of rules. And so they did. And they found they were no longer spent as much time hanging by one leg upside down in trees. They were able to finish their chocolate ice cream cones and baseball was a lot more fun. But every day at noon, not everyone was coming over to Benjamin's house and play cowboy, dig and sing and dance like they were supposed to. I can't. I have an earache, one guy said. I'm allergic said another guy. My, my pail and shovel are at the cleaners, Benjamin's sister said. Oh yeah, said Benjamin. Prove it. Show me doctor's notes and a pail and shovel cleaning ticket. The two guys had notes, but Benjamin's sister didn't have a pail and shovel cleaning ticket. She said she lost it. And then she said, okay, look, I don't like the third law. I don't see why every day at noon, everyone has to come over all the way to our house and play cowboy, dig and sing and dance to hail Benjamin. He's a heck of a guy. We have to because it's the law, the kingdom tried to explain. But it's a silly law. It serves no useful purpose, Benjamin's sister replied. True, 
Benjamin said. But I like it a lot. It's a fun law. His parents agreed. I don't think it's fun, Benjamin's sister said. I don't like it one bit. You don't? Benjamin asked. No, I don't, said his sister. To Benjamin's genuine surprise, more than a few people in the kingdom appeared to agree with her. Okay, no problem, Benjamin said with a shrug. From now on, the law is, every day at noon, no one's allowed to come over to our house and do anything. Brilliant! Hooray for Benjamin! cheered everyone in the kingdom. Everyone except Benjamin's sister, that is. Wait a minute, that's no good either, she shouted, taking a deep breath. We don't need a law to force people to come over to our house and play cowboy and dig and sing and stuff like that, but we shouldn't have one to stop them from doing it if they feel like it. We shouldn't? The kingdom asked. No, she said. As long as no harm comes to anyone, why should there be a law against it? You know, she has a point said her mother and father. A very good point, a lot of people in the kingdom joined in. So the kingdom kept the first and second laws in bunch of rules, but got rid of the third law altogether. They also decided that from now on, all of the people would be involved in making laws and rules because, after all, stuff like that was just too important to be left to some guy in a cowboy hat. Benjamin eventually became a very successful singing cowboy. His sister became senior partner at the kingdom's very first law firm. His parents became umpires, and the kingdom that now had some laws and some rules lived lawfully ever after. It still had no king, but it's too late to get into that now.